Hello everyone in modern philosophy. Um, what I wanted to do today is give you a brief uh, lecture video talking about George Berkeley's um, principles of human knowledge that you had to read for today and that you have a quiz on this evening. Um, this will not be a long video that's not going to be exhaustive in terms of talking about everything that is in Berkeley. But I do think, given the nature of our course and how abstract some of this material can be, um, reading it on your own, you may not get uh, the full, um, you know, importance of, of what's there. And so I just want to try to hit some of the main themes and talk about um, what, I, what I'd like you to get out of this reading, especially in reference to who we just read prior to spring break for two weeks, um, John Locke. So I think the context for Berkeley um, is thinking about the problem that we continuously ran into with Locke. Locke is the first of the empiricists that we read this semester, um, and Locke seemed to be pushing empiricism, or the, simply the doctrine that knowledge of the world begins and ends with experience. And by experience, Locke seems to mean, if you remember, um, uh, that ideas or, or that our sources of knowledge about the world either arise from sensation when objects in the world come into contact with either, any of our five senses and um, from reflection when we reflect upon the ideas that we have received from sensation and we become aware of the operations of our own mind. So Locke was pushing empiricism to its limits. And it runs into some natural limits, because if you're going to say that knowledge of the world begins and ends with experience, it seems to rule out being able to do any kind of serious metaphysics, which is to say making any kind of claims about um, things that go beyond our experience, which is to say our, our physical experience. And so Locke continuously make claims, for example, about things like uh, primary qualities. He says that primary qualities exist in the object and that in some sense the, the primary quality is responsible for producing in us um, the secondary quality. Um, and so you remember these particular examples that we discussed, but that there is somehow a connection between uh, the primary quality um, producing the, the secondary quality in us. So something like solidity, which is in the object, uh, produces uh, something like color in us. Similarly, Locke would make claims about something like um, one of the degrees of knowledge that he discussed. So we talked about intuitive, demonstrative. He talked about sensitive knowledge and how uh, this is, seems to be a kind of knowledge um, that is related to um, actually sort of uh, being in contact with an object in the world and that there is a kind of decidedly different qualitative aspect to this kind of experience that is different than simply uh, remembering the experience later, but that um, in some sense we are, uh, we know what it's like to interact with an object itself. Now again, this may just seem like common sense, but for somebody who's, who's engaged in a philosophical project, who's doing philosophy, who's engaged upon who's engaged in reflecting upon what it's like to know the world. Um, he, these kinds of claims border on metaphysical claims about what things seem to be like independent of us. And in particular with primary qualities, uh, Locke um, seems to have some, some issues. And so having that context in place is important for understanding what Berkeley is up to. Locke in addition to rationalists, but Locke seems to be Berkeley's primary um, target in this reading. Um, so it may seem weird to think of Berkeley as an empiricist, but in some ways Berkeley might be the most uh, consistent empiricist, even if his empiricism uh, runs into some strange conclusions, such as the idea that matter doesn't exist or that ideas are the only things that exist. Um, nonetheless, if you're committed to experience as your guide to uh, how we know things, then you seem to also have to be committed at the same time 
to certain fairly radical counterintuitive conclusions, but also ones that are most consistent with empiricism as the, as the doctrine that you are uh, committed to. So with that said, I want to just think about a few different um, aspects of Barclay's um, philosophy that he's laying out in today's reading. 